Hi everybody, I'm Will Hall, and I'm gonna be speaking with you about coming off psychiatric medications, a harm reduction approach. Um, I'm a therapist, and I also have a lot of experience working with the peer recovery movement, and I myself was diagnosed with schizophrenia and went through a whole many year recovery process. And I should first of all say that this is not medical advice, this is not um, telling you what you should do, this is not coming from a perspective that's pro-medications, or anti-medications, it's not a judgment perspective, it's a harm reduction perspective, which means looking at all the different potential benefits that are involved with taking medications, looking at the benefits that maybe are involved with coming off medications, looking at the risks that are involved with taking medications, looking at the risks that are involved with coming off medications, and making the decision that's best, uh, best for you. Um, so again, I'm not a medical prescriber. This is really something you should speak to your own prescriber with, your own doctor, in order to make the decision that, that works best for you. So over the years, I myself have taken many different psychiatric drugs. I've taken antipsychotics, I've taken antidepressants, I've been on lithium, I've been on anti-anxiety drugs, and I personally found that these medications were not helpful to me. They, in fact, made things worse. I'm not anti-medications. I work with and am friends with and am close to a lot of people who take medications, but I also see that the society is really biased in favor of putting people on and keeping them on medications. And it was a many, many years process of trial and error to get to where I am today because I was in a really extreme, difficult crisis state years ago and I was paranoid I wouldn't leave my apartment I had suicide attempts I would think people were trying to hurt me I was very very withdrawn and isolated and I, I, it took me a long time to get from there to where I am today and one of the most important things that I had to learn was to not believe that stereotype when I was um, locked up and put in isolation um, rooms in the hospital and given that diagnosis of schizophrenia, it was really like putting a social death sentence on me. It was like casting a spell that says, this is who you are, this is, you're always gonna be like this. Change your expectations, give up hope. Um, and that became like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so it was many, many years of trial and error, trying different things, learning about nutrition, learning about spiritual practice, uh, learning about changing my attitude, learning about exercise, getting into nature, connecting with people, working on my trauma issues that helped me. And I think the most important thing that helped me was getting in touch with the peer recovery movement and being part of a community of other people who had been in hospitals, who had been diagnosed, who had been on medications, and to get the message that, look, recovery is possible, people can become empowered. And so that's the message that I really want to impart to you, that it may be that you know you continue to stay on your medications, you may not come off your medications completely, maybe you do decide, and maybe you are someone who comes off of their medications, but I do believe that everyone can become more empowered about their psychiatric medication decisions. But what it takes is it takes coming out of this belief system that we're just sick and broken people and we just have to stay in the box that psychiatry has put us in. So I want to begin just with um, talking a little bit about the, um, what the problem is. Why is it that um, people are interested in this topic of coming off medications? Well, um, first of all, there isn't a lot of information out there. Um, medical professionals are very quick to put people on medications, but there aren't often exit strategies for getting them off medications. And people are often left not having access to resources, support, and um, good knowledge that they can make good decisions about how to come off their psychiatric drugs. Um, so that's first of all, this is really an educational video, an educational um, effort, and that's where this work came from. Um, in my work with the uh, Freedom Center in Western Massachusetts, we um, met a lot of people who were really turning to us for information, and we sort of developed a lot of our own uh, knowledge and our own expertise, and we decided to develop a guide that would um, answer some basic questions and help people. That's the Harm Reduction Guide to Coming Off of Psychiatric Drugs. You can download that um, for free off of the uh, internet and it's also available in many different um, translations. So even though medications are often very helpful for some people, for interrupting crisis, for getting people to sleep, um, for um, making it possible to go to work or go to school 
or to manage extreme states of consciousness for like leveling you out when you feel like you're in a life out of control. Um, medications can also be very risky, especially over the long term. Um, some of the side effects of medications end up being worse than the conditions that they're prescribed for in the first place. Um, so even though there's often a lot of utility in psychiatric drugs um, in the short term, once we start getting into long-term use, that's when a lot of the costs start to outweigh the benefits. So some of the things that, that people um, look at in terms of risk, I mean, the benzodiazepines, the anti-anxiety drugs are very addictive. In fact, they're more addictive than heroin and they can be very dangerous um, uh, in terms of um, disrupting sleep and causing long-term problems associated with addiction. Um, lithium and the antipsychotics um, can change brain chemistry over the long term, which actually can make people more vulnerable to psychosis once you've been on those drugs for a while. Um, they're also very toxic. They can cause organ damage, organ failure, early death. And these are problems that are associated with those drugs over the long term. Um, there are memory problems. Sometimes people get into uh, manic reactions sometimes with the antidepressants. In fact, sometimes people have a manic reaction to an antidepressant and then doctors might say, oh, you're on, you're bipolar now, so we have to put you on these additional bipolar drugs. So that's a problem that people get into. Um, obesity, diabetes, and metabolic problems. There's a rash associated with Lamictal that can be life life-threatening. Um, some of the antidepressants, there's research coming out now that says long-term use of the antidepressants can also make you more vulnerable to depression. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons why we um, want to look at the risks associated with psychiatric drugs and really consider the possibility of coming off or reducing in the long term if we can. Um, we've also been given a lot of bad information, so people don't really know that there are many people like myself, like a lot of the people that I've worked with, who successfully have been able to reduce their medications or come off medications over time. Um, often it's done very slowly and gradually. I'm going to be talking about that uh, a little bit more. Um, uh, but um, we're not really told that so many people out there are able to successfully come off of their medications. There are other ways to recover than relying on psychiatric drugs. Um, so because of this, the stakes that are involved, often these are really life-threatening uh, decisions. They feel like life or death. Face, people are facing suicide. They're facing hospitalization. They might be facing something that's very life-threatening from the medication itself, like um, uh, organ toxicity or um, something like neuroleptic malignant syndrome, the stakes feel very high. It really feels like this is a life or death kind of discussion. As a result, it's hard to talk about it. It's hard to have an honest, um, honest talk about it. And so that's one of the first things I think is most important um, in approaching this issue is to start to get some accurate information. Um, so uh, one of the things that we're told um, I was told, diagnosed with schizophrenic people, diagnosed with schizophrenia, people diagnosed with bipolar, someone who has a psychotic episode. People are told, okay, this is a disease and the medications are going to correct that disease process and therefore you need to be on medications. Well, yes, many people find medications helpful. They often are helpful for interrupting crisis, but the causes of what we call psychosis or schizophrenia or bipolar aren't known and we don't have the kind of clinical tests or physical evidence that there actually is a disease process going on. And so the claim that someone has to be on medications for the rest of their life because they have a disease isn't really a scientifically or medically based factual claim. And the reason I emphasize that is that opens up the door to saying, well, is this medication useful for me or is it not useful for me? And then judging continuing to take the medication based on that rather than on this often fear-based belief and this dogmatic belief that, well, you have a disease, therefore you have to take the medication. Um, the research does show that there are many people who are able to recover without medications. The research also shows that, hey, many people are going to find that using medications, even using them long term, is what works best for them. So again, coming back to that harm reduction perspective that we need a flexible approach, we need to really look um, honestly, how medications are useful to people. So what is it that, that causes um, experiences like a psychotic episode when people kind of lose touch with reality and go into an extreme state? What is it that causes us to go so depressed that we can't get out of bed or feed ourselves um, to have like a manic episode or become really extreme um, in our um, withdrawal 
or to just find it really, really difficult to cope emotionally. What are the causes of that? Well, the science really isn't, um, isn't there to provide us a clear-cut answer. There are a lot of different um, ways of approaching that. Um, anything from this is a physical problem and um, I need to address it physically to this is a holistic health problem. Maybe I have um, allergies, maybe I have deficiencies um, with um, uh, vitamins or amino acids, or maybe I'm having some kind of physical um, problem with my thyroid. Maybe there are um, uh, other kinds of holistic health um, issues that are, that are um, feeding into why it is that we're having this experience. There also are um, a lot of, of studies now that are showing that trauma plays a really, really key role in a lot of the things that we call mental illness or, or psychosis. Um, child abuse, um, sexual abuse, um, experiences uh, with, in, in families, assault, bullying, all these things can be playing into what it is that, that leads people to have um, some kind of psychiatric crisis or some kind of psychotic episode. Um, there also are a lot of approaches now that are looking at spirituality that maybe someone is having a spiritual crisis and they need to look at their experience from a spiritual uh, perspective. Um, there are questions about exposure to environmental toxins. There are all kinds of ways of looking at these things that we call mental illness, but ultimately it's up to the individual to find for themselves what their meaning is and what's a pragmatic approach to what's actually going to help them. And so that's why we adopt a harm reduction approach that says, let's find out what works for you. Let's find out what understanding works for you because the science really doesn't support only seeing it in one way or only um, uh, viewing the issue from one perspective. So there are a lot of different possible explanations and a lot of different directions for you to explore nutrition, allergies, um, conflict with family. Um, sometimes it's useful to think in terms of some people being more sensitive and more creative and maybe they have just greater vulnerability to stress and need to set up their lives in a certain way that supports their sensitivity. But the main thing is to not get locked into a I absolutely need these medications because it's a biological disease until you've actually explored and looked at different options and then decided, okay, based on my experience of things that I've tried, things that I've explored, this is what works best for me right now in my life. Um, one of the things also that I think is really important to understand about these conditions is that we've been told that diseases are genetic based, um, that they're chemical imbalances in the brain, and therefore they're um, something that's a permanent part of us. And that actually the research shows that often having a psychotic crisis can be a transitory temporary episode in someone's life. So you go through a crisis and then you change and learn and grow and you come out of the crisis and then you move on with your life. Maybe you need to adopt some different things in your lifestyle. Maybe you need to pay attention to your wellness. Maybe you need to have a different attitude about things that your decisions that you're making in your life. But it's a transitory thing that you can move on from. And I, I want to encourage people to be open to that idea because a lot of us who have recovered do feel like we've kind of put the more extreme parts of our crisis um, behind us and we're able to continue on in our life. And the research also really um, supports this. And um, I think that it's important as part of that to also to not see the medications as necessary for prevention of returning to crisis. That um, sometimes we think that we've been through such a terrible, terrible thing, hospitalization, often very traumatic, crisis, facing suicide, facing the kind of fear that comes in the depths of, of something that we call psychosis, that can be really scary. And so we hold on to those medications, feeling like we have to, to prevent going back. Well, that may be something that's true for you. It may also not be true for you. And it's important to explore that and to not get locked into this view that, well, I have a disease, therefore I need the medications um, to prevent the recurrence of those kinds of episodes. So let's move on to some basic information about medications. So if medications are not um, correcting a disease process or correcting a chemical imbalance, why is it that people find them so useful? Well, the reality is that p medications can be very useful, um, but they're useful not because of that disease process. They're useful because they're drugs and they alter our consciousness. And by altering our consciousness, that can give us um, beneficial effects. I mean, a really good example 
is sleep. If you take a medication that helps you to sleep by making you drowsy, by making you relax, by tranquilizing you, you get some sleep, that can make a dramatic effect for our, for our wellness because so often I see that people go into that crisis state because they have been sleep deprived and they don't realize the danger that they're in when they start to be sleep deprived and start to, to feel the effects of not getting sleep. So the medication is um, causing an altered state of consciousness that's useful in that case. And medications are psychiatric drugs like any other drug. We tend to have a view in society that says, well, there are the recreational drugs over here, there are the pharmaceutical drugs over here. Well, actually, they're part of the same class of psychoactive chemicals. So that's not to be against them um, or in favor of them, but just to understand how they work. When you're taking a medication, taking it long term, you're altering your consciousness long term in ways that may or may not be beneficial to you. And you want to evaluate it based on the benefit. Um, one of the things, too, to keep in mind is that when you start to take the medication long term, you're altering your brain chemistry. You become um, adjusted on a physical basis to taking the medication every day. So an example that I, that I use um, often is a very, a very simple model of drug, drug uh, dependency and withdrawal would be, say, caffeine addiction. Someone who takes ca coffee every single day is administering caffeine to their body. They're causing a mild altered state that some people um, find useful and beneficial. They like it. Some people don't like the effects of uh, caffeine. And then if they're taking it every day, their brain chemistry changes. Now, if they suddenly stop taking that caffeine, they're going to have withdrawal effects. They'll get headaches. They'll have all the different things that we associate it with coming off of caffeine. And people who are trying to kick the caffeine habit often find that, well, if they cut back slowly, they give their brain time to adjust and they don't have to suffer through that kind of withdrawal effect that's so uncomfortable. And obviously, caffeine is a very different drug than a neuroleptic or an antipsychotic or lithium or an antidepressant. But basically, the principle here is the same. And... Um, people are going to be reacting differently to that withdrawal effect, just like they're going to be reacting differently to the um, altered states that the drug gives them. Some people are going to like it. Some people are going to have difficulty with it. Some people are not going to notice it at all. But there's a very individual and personal um, response. We talk about the placebo effect and the subjective effect of the medication. Um, but there is a physical ch change that takes place in the brain. There is a physical dependency that takes place some Drugs are more addictive than others. Some drugs build up tolerance and some drugs don't. But basically, the, the, the principle here is the same. These are psychoactive drugs. They change brain chemistry. And then coming off of them or reducing them, people are going to be experiencing withdrawal effects. So this is a very important principle when we're looking at reducing and coming off medications, that there are going to be withdrawal effects. And the withdrawal effects often are going to look like psychosis or emotional distress. Some of the main um, uh, withdrawal effects are anxiety. People can become paranoid. They can start to have difficulties uh, sleeping. You can start to have a psychotic experience from the medication withdrawal itself. It may be that some of the feelings and experiences that the medications have helped to suppress are coming back and you need to deal with those. But it may be the withdrawal process itself. It may be that you just need to give your brain time to readjust to having a lower amount of the medication in your system. And those withdrawal effects will ease over time as that adjustment process takes place in your body. So that's a really important to understand because sometimes when people start to have those withdrawal effects, people will say, oh, I need my medications because if I don't have my medications, if I reduce my medications, I don't have my medications, I'm going to have a recurrence of my symptoms, going to have a recurrence of my disorder and I need the medications, but actually that's a misunderstanding of how the medications work often. Um, it's uh, a misunderstand, misrecognition of the withdrawal effects. So medications are useful because they can, they can numb us to symptoms, they can tranquilize us, they can stimulate us, they can help us get to sleep, they can sort of flatten us out, they can bring us down from the extremes of an extreme state of consciousness or a psychosis. And that can be useful, especially in the short term. Long term, we might start to have some, some problems and some difficulties. So the coming off process itself isn't something that's talked about um, very much because 
It is um, risky. It's risky to stay on medications. It's risky to go off medications. Life is not without risk. And um, we tend to not acknowledge the rights of people to make their own decisions. That if you're facing organ damage or you're concerned about memory problems or you just feel you not, can't contact your emotions or your creativity or you're worried about the long-term effects of your medications and you want to explore coming off, that's your choice. It's something that, that should be supported because all of us need to make that, that cost-benefit um, calculation for the kinds of choices that we want to make about our, our medical care. But often doctors are very conservative, they're very cautious, um, they see medications as the only answer. But um, people do successfully come off medications, but there isn't one specific set way or recipe that um, works for everyone. Again, going back to the harm reduction approach, this is an individualized um, perspective. It's something about learning for yourself what's working for you as you go. It's learning as you go. So decisions about psychiatric medications really need to be made from a standpoint of looking at the costs and benefits of the risks and harms that are associated with the whole decision. So usually what happens is that um, doctors and hospitals and mental health professionals will look at this cost-benefit analysis, but they will exaggerate the risks that are associated with psychiatric symptoms, and they will downplay the risks that are so associated with psychiatric medication. So for example, if someone is feeling suicidal, they will immediately feel like that has to be medicated. Well, a lot of us live sometimes with feelings of, of feeling suicidal. Um, hearing voices, a lot of us live with hearing voices or learn to cope with hearing voices. Going through depressed periods, having periods when you're a little wild or have wild energy. So it's not to say that those things aren't serious, but we have to have a much more um, honest assessment of the risks and benefits um, with medication decisions by not exaggerating the risks and harms that are associated with symptoms. And also we need to take a look at the risks that are associated with medications because they're, they're very serious, especially long term. And also treatments that um, people can be traumatized in hospitals, people can be very damaged by labels, by diagnostic labels. Sometimes people find diagnostic labels helpful and empowering, but also sometimes they can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's very important for us to be looking at this cost-benefit analysis from a much more honest place and realizing that getting rid of symptoms may not be the most important thing, that we may be able to find ways of living with symptoms. And I also see that people often make a cost-benefit analysis that was appropriate for an earlier part of their life, but they're a different person now. So once you've been in the hospital once, you've been through that crisis, you may have learned a lot of things. You may have changed as a person. So to realize that things may be different now and that maybe now the risks that you face around that emotional distress or sleep or um, paranoia or depression, maybe they aren't as severe as they were previously. And to be willing to explore and to, re and to look at the question again from a much more flexible and open standpoint, rather than making assumptions that say, well, I was in the crisis in the past, I needed my medications then, that's the end of the story. So once we have a clearer understanding about what is known and not known about mental illness, and once we have a clearer understanding about how medications work and why they're useful, then we can start to look at the withdrawal and coming off process itself from a much more informed place so that we're actually making better and wiser decisions. And um, I think about the uh, coming off process um, in terms of three different components. Um, the component of getting support, the component of creating wellness alternatives for yourself, and the component of the actual stages and process of the actual medication reduction itself. Now again, I want to emphasize that everyone is different and so people really, there is no um, recipe that people can follow. There's no set um, pattern that is going to work for everyone. I've seen a wide diversity of ways that people um, are able to reduce and come off medications. So um, everyone is different and I want to also emphasize that as you start this process, the harm reduction approach means being very flexible. 
you may have a goal of like, I've got to get off this medication or I think I need this medication. And then as you learn, you may need to revise some of that thinking. Um, I've seen people who have wanted to get completely off their medications. They're able to make a reduction and they find that their life quality has so improved and that was about as far as they could reduce, but actually they're very happy that now they're on the reduced dose. So now they decide to stay at that reduced dose for a time. Uh, there are people who start a process where they start reducing and they go a little too fast or they realize that they really do need to stay on the medication for a time. And then so they need to revise their goal and say, okay, my time frame is different now, so my goals are different. Allow yourself the flexibility to learn as you go. So one of the first things I think people need to think about is support. Um, I have seen people reduce and come off medications on their own. That might work for some people. Usually that's not the best way to do it. Usually the first thing you want to do is think about, am I isolated? Do I have support around me? Do I have people on my side? Do I have really um, a group of supporters that's really on board um, this process with me? So have those discussions with people. Um, become informed. Learn about your medications, learn about the risk, be able to explain to your supporters why is it that you want to come off medications. You may need to help educate them about the nature of your experience, that it's not this disease that you have to take medications for the rest of your life. You may need to educate them about how the, the medications work. Have those dialogues, have those discussions so that you can start to feel like you have people who are with you so that if things start to become a little bit difficult or confusing or you have some strong emotions or you go through a rough patch, they're there and they understand the process. They can be there with you and support you. Um, this could be family members, this could be close friends, this could be peer specialists, folks, folks in the peer recovery movement. Um, it could also be healthcare uh, professionals. And often um, if you just ask a doctor, I want to come off my medication, I want to reduce my medication, they're going to be resistant and they're, they're not going to want to do that because they have a certain set way of understanding your problems and frankly they're, they're frightened to look at things from a different perspective. That's how they do it, that's how they're going to want to continue to do it. What I've found is that if people approach your prescriber with um, some knowledge, if you approach them with the information that you have a plan, if you approach them with telling them that, hey, I've got my family on my side, I've got a therapist that I'm working with, I've got a healthcare practitioner. If you show them that you're empowered, that you're approaching this from a more flexible view, that it's not just about, I've got to get from point A to point B, but I'm going to start a process and learn as I go, then often you can get at least the prescribers to go along with you if you take the initiative. If the prescriber is really, really resistant and is just absolutely not going to be listening to um, uh, your perspective, that's when you might want to think about getting a new prescriber. Um, sometimes I encourage people to bring in someone to go with them to their meeting um, with their doctor or prescriber to, to just help make the case. Um, and sometimes people are in situations where they're just absolutely alone, but do the best that you can to have a prescriber who's at least going to go along with the, uh, with the process. And again, your supporters are going to be really important for you people to turn to, people to um, help you through um, the difficult spots, people who can help you in the decision-making process of where to go um, at each step of the way. So the second step to think about in terms of coming off psychiatric medications is wellness tools. And all of us have things that we do for our wellness. It doesn't matter whether you have a mental health diagnosis or you don't have a mental health diagnosis. All of us do things for our wellness. And for a lot of us, it's as simple as the food that we eat. It's having friends that we can talk to. It's being able to go out in nature to get some exercise. Um, all of us have things that we do to help us feel good and grounded and, and safe um, in our lives. And the coming off process is really going to challenge some of that wellness. So we want to develop tools and develop uh, methods, maybe learn some new things, explore some things, think about things that we used to do in the past that we may have gotten away from, and really get familiar with a whole range of options that we have for our own wellness. So that in the withdrawal process, we're facing withdrawal effects, um, we have some things that we can do. and. Since we've been relying on this medication 
to deal with our emotions, to deal with our psychological problems. We're not going to be relying on it as much. What are we going to rely on instead? And there's a, a, a many, many different things. What's a wellness tool for one person maybe isn't a wellness tool for another person. So what you want to do is get into the habit of having some things that you know are useful for you. Um, one of the most difficult withdrawal symptoms is problem sleeping. So what are you going to do when you can't sleep? And um, that could mean um, having um, a good, healthy exercise um, uh, habit that you set up for yourself that helps you to sleep at night. It could mean having some herbs. It could mean talking to a homeopath and getting a homeopathic remedy or something over the counter. Um, it might also mean that you have a psychiatric medication that you use for sleep, um, specifically for a sleep problem that you can have available for you. Another withdrawal issue that people come into frequently that they need a wellness tool to deal with is anxiety. How do you manage your own anxiety? How do you deal with frightening emotions? How do you deal if you start to go into a frightening extreme state? What are some of the tools that you have for that? Um, talking with people is a, great, is a great tool. Writing in your journal, having a, a therapist, anything that you can do to help reduce stress in your life is helpful. Understanding your, your nutrition, are there different foods that help you with anxiety, are there foods that make your anxiety worse? Have an understanding of these wellness tools before you get into the, um, the coming off process. Um, often for a lot of us, um, having a mental health diagnosis, having been through a psychiatric crisis, it really is related to trauma. So if you have trauma in your life, what are some of the things that you're doing? Do you understand about your traumatic experiences? Do you have people that you can go to that can support you? Do you have things that you can do when you feel like you're having a flashback or you're having some kind of traumatic symptom? Have these kinds of things um, in place before you start the coming off process. So the third step in um, coming off medications is actually the, the coming off medications process itself in terms of the pills that you're taking. And again, people are very different. Understanding what we do about the withdrawal effects of psychiatric drugs, we can generally speaking say that going slower is going to be better. Now I have seen people who are able to reduce more quickly or all of a sudden. There's also sometimes there are uh, medical conditions that indicate that someone be withdrawn immediately from psychiatric drugs. For example, if someone is having a lamictal rash or they're having signs of neuroleptic malignant syndrome um, or some kind of extreme adverse um, reaction to their medications, the medical professional may decide and advise that this person has to come off that medication immediately because of the risk that's involved. But generally speaking, um, going slow and gradually um, is the much better course um, for coming off of medications. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, people um, often talk about a 10% reduction for two or three weeks. So you may want to break up your pills. You may want to switch to a liquid form of the pills so that you can measure it in a measuring cup. You may want to go to a compound pharmacy so that you can control the dosage of your pills better. Um, reduce that 10%. Um, and which drug to start with is, is really an individual thing. Start with maybe the drug that you feel like is not helping you very much. If you have an intuition that the drug is the one to start with, if you feel that the drug is giving you really bad side effects, maybe start with that drug. If you're taking several drugs of one, of one class, like two different kinds of antipsychotics, start with one of the antipsychotics you're taking. Um, and choose that drug, go one at a time, reduce by 10%, and then see how it goes over three weeks. Notice the withdrawal effects. If they come, notice any kind of emotional um, experiences that you have, any kind of physical symptoms that you have. You might also not notice anything. I mean, there are people who are able to go through some of the coming off process, and it goes smoothly for a while. So don't expect one thing or the other. Keep a very open mind and a very um, flexible approach, but do monitor uh, what you're experiencing. Again, this is when a doctor and a healthcare provider can be very, very helpful for you to be working with you closely to monitor the process as you go. And then if you um, find that the withdrawal effects are too much for you to handle, given the wellness tools that you have, 
don't have any hesitation to go back up on that drug. This is not about success or failure. This is about a learning process. And it may take a few steps in one direction, then you go in another direction, you step back. You want to remain flexible and open to the process as it unfolds. And then once you've successfully reduced um, by 10% of your dose, do another reduction of the same amount. See how that goes for a few weeks. And then continue as you gradually start to whittle, whittle down and reduce um, the, your reliance on medications. One thing that's also helpful to understand in the actual process of coming off medications is that some drugs have different half-lives, so they leave your body more quickly. And that means that the withdrawal is going to be more severe for that drug because it's leaving your body um, faster than other drugs with a longer half-life. So one thing that people do, this is especially true of withdrawal from, say, the benzodiazepines, um, is that they will switch one drug to a similar drug the same dose, but that drug has a longer half-life, so it'll stay in your system longer and allow you to reduce more gradually. And often people find that there are um, less severe side effects with that. And often also people find that when they get to the very end of a reduction, when they are actually on the smallest dose, that's when it becomes more difficult to reduce their medications. And sometimes there are all kinds of um, emotional issues and psychological issues that are brought up with that and don't feel like you have to finish it and just get off the medication. You may just want to stay on a very low dose for a long period and just settle into becoming comfortable with not being on as much medications as you were before. And then eventually you may decide to go ahead and reduce that, that medication. So generally speaking, and again, there's no one way for everyone, those are really the three main steps that I see in the coming off medication process. One is getting support. Um, two is understanding, getting into habits around our wellness tools that we have available. And three is the actual medication reduction process itself, going usually going in slow, gradual, um, tapering down your dosage. And I think that one of the most important things to look at is our expectations in this whole process. If we have people around us and we have something inside of us that says, hey, maybe I can do this, maybe I can reduce my medications, maybe I can improve the quality of my life, then I think the process is going to be a lot easier. If you have a people around you that are very skeptical, who are very frightened, who are focused on the negative, who are really thinking that you should just really stay where you are with your medications and not even explore or think outside of that framework, that's going to make the process, I think, a lot more difficult. And so um, getting good information, getting accurate information, having people around us who have some good accurate information that maybe goes against the grain of what we've been told, um, that maybe doesn't quite fit into the mainstream views of, of psychiatric medications and mental illness, having that alternative perspective can be really, really important. So this has really been just a starting point for your own learning and education, and I encourage you to become uh, knowledgeable, to learn as much as you can about the medications that you are on, uh, learn about the wellness tools that are available, um, learn about holistic health care options, and there are a lot of resources um, online. There's uh, my Harm Reduction Guide to Coming Off Psychiatric Drugs, which is available for free online. There are websites like the Icarus Project and Beyond Meds. Um, books like Robert Whitaker's book, Anatomy of an Epidemic. And this is really a learning process, so I encourage you to stay in touch and send me information about what you've learned with the coming off process. And most importantly, to believe in your own capacity to become more empowered and to make better decisions about your own medications. Um, so thank you for watching.